the first uh, and most appropriate treatment for someone with trigeminal neuralgia is medications. But oftentimes those, those medications cause debilitating side effects uh, such as dizziness, nausea, um, uh, lethargy, uh, and require you know, cessation of the medication. Or the medications may work uh, for a period of time, even years, but ultimately uh, stop working. Once we, a patient gets to the point uh, of uh, requiring operative intervention, there's essentially two pathways um, that we can go. One is microvascular decompression, uh, which is a, uh, an operation uh, directed at the trigeminal nerve, where we actually inspect the trigeminal nerve uh, through a microscope or an endoscope, and we find the artery and or vein that's compressing the nerve, move that artery and or vein, and interpose a Teflon cushion between the artery and or vein. The other line of treatment are what we call ablative or destructive procedures directed at the trigeminal nerve. It's commonly called a rhizotomy. And uh, while there's certainly a place for those procedures, uh, we reserve that only in cases where microvascular decompression fails or in patients who are deemed unfit uh, for general anesthetic. I do both of those procedures, but I'm much more apt to offer microvascular decompression when it's appropriate because it's the only procedure that really preserves the integrity of the trigeminal nerve and offers patients a chance to really return to a normal lifestyle. When I first started as a neurosurgeon, patients over the age of 60 were rarely offered microvascular uh, decompression because they were, it was felt that the procedure was too risky. And I began to look at that and say, well, these people are fit and they have 20 more years of life or maybe 30 more years of life. Why can't they undergo a microvascular decompression? And uh, subsequently began to uh, critically evaluate that and, and perform microvascular decompression with very good results, which we've published. I think that having a great deal of experience and seeing all the different types of compression and the variations of compression uh, allows us to achieve a really high rate of success. My experience is that about 95% of patients with the classic form of trigeminal neuralgia will awaken from the procedure immediately pain-free. I mean, as soon as they hit the post-operative recovery room, they'll say, Doc, the pain is gone. I've literally performed more than a thousand microvascular uh, decompression operations uh, and our whole team understands uh, this condition as well as anybody who doesn't have the condition can understand it. Uh, that team includes nurses, physician assistants, and uh, neurophysiologists uh, as well as a dedicated neurologist uh, to help us achieve these results. Mm -hmm.